The first edition of the Lift Me Up Women's Conference celebrated the International Women's Day 2023 with women from all walks of life exploring the impact of the digital gender gap on widening economic and social inequalities. The event was graced with movers and shakers in the technology sector. This conference spotlighted the importance of protecting the rights of women and girls in digital spaces, which is critical for nation building. Bringing women into technology results in more creative solutions and has greater potential for innovations that meet women's needs and promote gender equality. Happy International Women's Day. It's quite scary to be here, you know. And you know me, I've been doing this for like, you know, the years faith. The years that faith was mentioning, those many years. And, um, and you, you always get um, uh, the jitters when you are talking to people. Even the people you know and love and respect and trust. I trust women. I always feel safe when I'm around women. Uh, that's why I think uh, from what Faith was saying, please feel safe with Faith, with the Zimbabwe Independent, the female editor, and the Sunday Mail. There's a female editor there, so that we can work on the, those stats. Those stats are scary. Um, and um, I, I actually thought uh, Faith would speak a bit about uh, the leadership element as well, because the leadership starts in terms of media organizations in Zimbabwe are also scary. I think we're at 12%. Yeah, so, so there are a lot of areas where we need to uh, kind of uh, work at. Uh, good morning. You know me, I come from talking, broadcasting. I, I am a behind-the-scenes actor. I don't, I, I don't stand in front of uh, cameras and microphones, so I always relish the opportunity. But I started my career also in media lecturing, so I also love teaching. I promise you I'm not going to teach anybody, anything, but I hope this will be a conversation and a discussion. And I know I have 10 minutes. I'm usually very good with uh, time management. Um, so I will try my level best to not overshoot. Um, oh, okay, I'm supposed to, okay. I'm trying to just get my bearings, okay. So, uh, I was asked to talk about um, how media and technology intersect and also how in my industry, because th those are the terms of reference I got from Unique, and how in my industry technology is important and how we harness it and use it and what are the issues that come up when we are dealing with technology. Um, so, for me, um, I want to look at uh, this technology from uh, two aspects. Uh, the role of technology in society, in terms of why is technology important. And thank you, Faith, you've done a bit of the work for me, so I will not belabor that point. Um, so, it is important because uh, when advancements come, we need to embrace them, we need to embrace change. The only constant in life is change, isn't it? So when those changes come, let's embrace them, let's not be afraid. I'm focusing on women and tech. So when I'm saying let's not be afraid, I'm talking about us women. Let's not be afraid of developments that can be useful for us. And we've seen how they can be useful, how technology can be useful, uh, how we can use it in the media sector, to share information, to educate each other um, uh, for our businesses. And Faith actually shared some stats on survival as well. How we can use technology for surviving, you know, uh, where you would have to wait for someone to find you. Let's say you've gotten into an accident 
or you've experienced domestic violence, you've got your phone with you, immediately you can get help. It can save your life. And obviously, ish, we've used technology for entertainment. I'm not even going to start talking about my Denzel, but we have used it for entertainment and we continue to use it for entertainment at so many levels. And entertainment is good. It's good for our mental health as well. You know, sometimes you just need something that makes you laugh, that, you know, frees your mind from budgeting and all those other things. So it's important. Um, so now when I'm looking at my industry, I'm looking at a scenario where we need to be looking at technology to move with the times. So for us, the buzzword is multimedia journalism. We need the women to not be afraid of technology. We need to embrace it. We need to retrain ourselves. And uh, I'm coming from Women in News, uh, which is part of World Association of News Publishers. Our, uh, the project I work for focuses on women. And what I do in 10 African countries now is do capacity building. And as much as I work in advisory, which is working with media organizations to upskill, our key focus, obviously, is women, and it's women leadership and is women skills building. And the one thing that we have seen is that when you go into the newsroom, there are very few women in leadership, that's one, but from a technological point of view, there are very few women who are either reporting on technology, working on technology desks, who are tech editors, digital editors, very few. So those percentages need to improve so that as women we are also there making change. I'm not going to talk about data, but there's one area that's very key that we have started focusing on, which is data journalism, data visualization. Because we've seen that uh, when you are looking at, um, when you are even looking at the uh, publics that we are dealing with, the, our populations are younger. And the people that are using technology are the young people. So, and they don't want too many words, you know. They relate better to graphic stuff, you know, graphics, numbers. So you need to be able to tell your story with a graph. So as a, as a journalist, as an editor, you need to be, you know, educated on how best to read those numbers, how to translate a 10-page report into two graphs that you share with your with your audience, so that, you know, they move with you. Otherwise, people are not going to spend, they are going to go to those snippets. I want to digress just a, a sec. You, you've seen what snippets have done on the issue of that Al Jazeera, right? So those snippets, you need to be able to tell your story in snippets, because people will spend more time, you know, uh, and they will form their opinion on the snippets rather than that 10-page uh, report, they are not going to read the 10-page report. Only scholars, you know, someone who is studying, you know, for uh, something else, or who's doing research, or who's doing a policy formulation kind of uh, document, who read your 10-page report. So let's be very clear who is, um, who is using uh, the online platforms. Here I just uh, have a, a slide on the statistics. Uh, internet, and these are um, stats of, uh, that came out in January this year. Internet users have grown by 160 million. The world's population, uh, which stood at 8, uh, 8 billion, uh, is 57% of these people residing in urban areas. And when we say that, we know what we mean by urban, you know, what uh, urban areas, uh, what people in urban areas consume and how they consume it, 64.4% of the world's population is now online. And uh, the other stat that I also heard is the one that uh, Faith shared on the women. Uh, we are talking about uh, women also being, being uh, those with 80% owning uh, telephones. And 50% of them are using those phones for business and other serious uh, issues, education, and so on. So, uh, and that means us. We are the ones that are uh, in these statistics. Uh, and there are 
5.4 billion unique mobile users around the world, equating to 68% of the total global uh, population. Smartphones account for roughly four in five mobile end users. Uh, and you know how this is happening? If you just look at Zimbabwe, we usually pass on our handsets, isn't it? If I bought my first smartphone four years ago, I don't throw it away, I hand it down. You know, um, I can tell you that my mother-in-law who lives in rural Mashingo owns a smartphone. And that's just, and most of our kids, some of them demand them, right? It's a right, isn't it? Because they want to, they use it for their homework and so on. So you can imagine the number of smartphones that teenagers, uh, teenagers have. Uh, so the, what are the advantages of this technology? Is the access, obviously, greater access to international audiences. There are no boundaries. And I think, Faith, you gave us perfect examples of Zimbabwean women that are doing amazing things online. And they are crossing boundaries. They don't need, it's not about you just saying I'm talking to, yes, you can frame your content for Zimbabweans, but the Zimbabweans are not in Zimbabwe. You are talking to Zimbabweans across the globe. You are talking to women across the globe. You are talking to people acro ac across the globe. So now when you even craft your content, you know that you've got those audiences and what point you are trying to make gets across. Um, also, technology enables us to have more tools of the trade. In the past, I can tell you, I, I worked at a time where if you had three cameras, you just had to make do with three cameras. You would wait for each other, I'm not going to say away, but you would wait for each other, and some stories would have to, you would have to pass on very important stories because the cameras were not enough to go around. But now what happens, how many cameras do we have in this room? So even if one person is not recording, there could be 30 others who are recording. So what technology has done has enabled us to have more tools of the trade in the media sector. It has enabled us to circulate information in real time. It has enabled us to be able to have conversations and debates much faster, quicker, and more efficiently. Um, we can't even talk about apps and software. And app. You know, the way we will edit the pictures that we get here differently. The way the, the videos, when we share them, sometimes you even say, oh, wow, is that me? Did I look that good? And sometimes you say, oh, gosh, that image, did I look that bad? Because of the softwares and the apps that we have, we can, you know, pretty much make things look the way we want, which is an advantage, isn't it? And also a disadvantage, because we can actually tell lies with some of the way we cook up our images and and make them look. So that's something to watch out for. Ability to gain new skills. It's easier to go online. You can pretty much teach yourself a lot of things. You don't have to wait and enroll at an institution to learn how to edit, to learn how to speak. You can go and teach yourself voice projection. How do I project myself? You can go and teach yourself how to look. How should I dress for an interview? Right, you go online and you, you know, uh, we were having a conversation the other time, you know, it was about dress code, you know, okay. So when you say this, what do you mean? When you say black tie, uh, please just go to Google to tell you when it says black tie, well, how are you supposed to dress? So that's what technology has done for us. Um, um, then obviously connecting, uh, I won't go into this, but I just want to point out, uh, because uh, also Faith spoke about TikTok and uh, YouTube, I think one thing that's critical is that when you are looking at the media sector, there are so many journalists, there are so many experts, but one thing that is critical is it is a business for some of us. We talk about it as a media industry. So you also need to know where are your audiences? Who are you targeting? What are they doing? Where are they? And how much attention span do they have for your product? So that you know how to craft that. Where are the young people? What are the young people doing? What apps are they, they using? They are definitely on TikTok. Um, 
And also young people are using apps such as Hinge and Bubble to make romantic, you know, romantic connections. So you need to know, if you are selling flowers or whatever, where do you go? Where do you find them hanging out? Because, you know, our time we used to, to hang out at Rainbow Cinemas. It doesn't even exist, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And we would go to Happy Days for ice cream. Right? That's where we used to hang out. And uh, some even used to go to drive-in. Who knows about the drive-in, which was in, was it Meboreng? That's where we used to hang out. So if you wanted to, to see the young people and the latest trends on fashion, that's where you'd go. But now where do you go? You go to this, um, you see what's happening on TikTok, you see what young people are doing, what are the things that they like. So the hangout places are now online. So when you are selling a product, when you are looking for friends, when you are looking for advertisers, go online. That's where you find them. So let me talk a bit about safety and security, uh, which uh, Faith uh, gave a testimony on. But I think what is uh, important is that obviously there's fake news. She actually gave us an example of fake news. But we need as much as there are all these good things, the great things about technology, let's be mindful of how much damage we can do by sharing fake, fake news. How much damage can be done to us by information which is not accurate. There is a lot of uh, harassment as well online, cyberbullying, trolling. There is, um, and online, when we're talking about online harassment, some of it we dismiss it because sometimes we don't even see that we are being harassed. I mean, you, you, you mentioned a, a, a point uh, about um, how important technology is in Zimbabwe and how as portraits we are doing all this and rolling out. And someone says, oh, I want to date you. I mean, I'm talking about important things and someone just responds like that, you know? And sometimes you don't even see that someone is looking down upon what it is that is of essence you are saying. Instead of having that discussion and debate on the crucial issues, you get dismissed. And sometimes you get harassed. Oh, I want your phone number. You know, give me your address. I want to take you out. All those are forms of harassment because you've not asked for that. That's not why you have come on that platform. There are platforms for dating, by the way, where you can actually say, here is my profile. You know, I want to, I'm looking for a guy who's six feet tall, you know, muscles and whatever. So that's the platform where someone can say, I really like you, I want to date you. Uh, so it really includes posting insults, threats, or demeaning comments um, on social media, creating a fake persona to bully. There are those that will actually go and create a different identity so that they can actually bully you. Um, so 73% of women journalists have experienced online harassment. This is how bad it is. You, you just go one, two, three, already someone will tell you, yes, I have experienced this. And it has a, a, a lot of um, uh, negatives to it, you know. It means that that women's perspective, the diversity element in content, you will not get it. Women are afraid of going online and sharing their, all these amazing nuggets they have because they don't want to be trolled, they don't want to be harassed. So we miss out on brilliant women who have brilliant ideas because they are running away from online platforms where they, they get uh, harassed. Um, so there I, I quoted uh, the UNESCO, uh, they've done this uh, uh, amazing um, survey that came out in, in November last year. Uh, it's, it's actually something to read. Also, there's a lot of hacking, there's lack of privacy, as much as, and I think this is where perhaps people get confused. Yes, your privacy can be um, attacked even when you are on a public platform like online because you decide what information you want to share. You don't want people digging and going back behind and following you and invading your privacy. I have decided that this is what I want to share online. I have gone and I've done a story, and here is the story. On 
from my blog, I've decided this is what I want to share. But sometimes it goes beyond that. People still come after you and they want to, they inbox you, they do all sorts of things so that, you know, they are invading your, your, your privacy. Obviously, there's also a lot of fraud and, that, uh, and, and a lot of spamming as well. And I'm sure we have all experienced uh, uh, where we are in meetings and people start sharing all manner of things. You know, people even hack into your uh, meetings, whether it's a Google Meet or a Zoom meeting, people hack in and they try, they are uh, sharing information or stuff that you don't want to see. Uh, and I just want to end up by, by sharing the, uh, the, um, this information on, on uh, women. I think the, the one thing that uh, research has shown is that female journalists receive more online abuse. And uh, the, that research, we found out that female journalists receive roughly three times as much abuse as their male counterparts. And a poll by the International Women's Media Foundation found that two-thirds of respondents reported facing violent and sexual threats online in response to their work. So you've gone, you've written your story, but you are then being attacked. And, and as Faith indicated, you know, you are just posting information that you believe is related to your work, but someone sexualizes that post, and some people even come and follow you. Women have been followed and been physically, violently attacked for the stories that they have posted online. So these are some of the dangers that uh, we need to guard against when it comes to, um, to technology and uh, online. So when women are the target, online harassment quickly descends into sexualized hate or threats more often than with men. So how do we address uh, these challenges? Let's be prepared. Um, how do we make sure that we are not, we are not left out in the, uh, in the tech journey? Let's be prepared, right? Let's read. Let's read more. Let's train more. Let's get the relevant skills that enable us to be the best at what we do. If you are into content creation and in the past you just used to stand, uh, you know, somewhere, just put a camera in front of you, be creative because no one is going to just look at my face standing here. People like to see, you know, amazing visuals. And they will leave your product and go elsewhere. And like I said, it is a business and we need to generate money from it. So we need to be exciting, entertaining. We need to provide uh, relevant information. Uh, also, when we are talking about fake news, let's also not be part of spreading false information. Let's verify. Let's check. Now there are even uh, apps that can help you to check if that information is correct. So before you reshare and post and retweet and whatnot, also just verify. After all, you know, we are, we are journalists, isn't it? We know the tenets of the trade. So we know that it is important to always fact check. So let's check. And also let's use private set, privacy settings on our devices when we are even browsing the internet, and when we protect our gadgets. You know, phones get stolen. You know, when someone steals your phone, maybe before they do anything, they will say, let me check if, if there's anything interesting that I could even make money and sell to X, uh, you know, X publication or platform. You know, there are publications that will pay for, for scandals. So let's also make sure that our gadgets are protected um, and let's also protect our, our mental health. Sometimes we, we, we push ourselves in the storm of a lot of content, right? You have no time to rest. You know, you are on, online on your phone 34, 34 hours a day. We all know it's 24 hours, but you know, some of us, we are there 34 hours. You can't even sleep. Where you are supposed to be sleeping, you are, you are online consuming all this, let's also be a bit discerning. What is it that builds us, you know? What is it that enhances my business networks? And let's spend our time there. And also, um, 
on the circle of, of uh, support that uh, Faith spoke about. Also know who can support you. And yes, the other element of, um, of mental health when you are being trolled and other, sometimes you need to pull back, right? Yes, don't, maybe don't run away too quickly. Say your bit, but pull back. Take like a week off and then come back. But don't obviously let yourself be bullied out of um, a platform that we have already said you use for education, you use for entertainment, you use to, to make money. So do not, do not be pushed away from, uh, from, that, um, uh, from that platform that you, uh, you make use of. And lastly, I think one of the uh, problems we have is that even within our organizations, we don't have robust policies in terms of how to protect each other when certain things happen online. I know that a lot of media organizations have a social media policy in as far as me, the employee, what I can post, right? Do not post what, what, do not do what, what, do not. But we don't have policies that say, when this happens to you, when you have posted, this is how we support you. So let's also encourage uh, within our organizations policies that support us and policies that also, for me, when I'm posting and something happens to me, I know exactly where to go and what to do and the kind of support I can have. Um, I'm sure the, the presentations will be shared. I, I've also uh, shared some useful links there uh, for online safety. Uh, so you can, uh, when the presentation is shared, you can go through them, have a look and see what else you can do to protect yourself online. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susan. Before you exit the stage, please may you take a seat for a question and answer. Please sit right in the middle. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for that very informative presentation, Susan. Um, I think a lot of us have realized, especially because of the COVID pandemic, just how much time and information we get from particularly social media. For me personally, I don't think I've watched as many YouTube videos as I have watched since COVID pandemic. Now, one of the things that you mentioned in your presentation was around the opportunities that technology is, is, is presenting. Um, and one in particular is chat GPT and the role of artificial intelligence in making journalists work easier, um, but also threatening the role of journalists as well as agencies. I know that um, because of you know, sanction issues, we can't actually access it in Zimbabwe. So my question to you, Susan, is from a Zimbabwean perspective, how well are we doing assimilating artificial intelligence in media and how much better can we, can we get? Uh, thank you. It's a, it's a complicated uh, question uh, in the sense that we don't have the statistics and I think it's important uh, perhaps to, to have that uh, research done in terms of how much we are using it. But I know that in terms of AI, quite a number of uh, organizations do use it. Um, and um, obviously, uh, on the chat, uh, it's, I guess it is a bit uh, uh, still out there. Uh, but in the sense of us being... Um, having the latest technologies uh, on our fingertips. I think that's the beauty of technology. You get access to it anyway. And I think one thing that you have seen is that we are pretty fast in finding the technology that works for us and using it. You know, we are sitting here, you see what we are doing with the screens, you see what these guys are doing. They, they will, you know, when we learn. I think one thing that I am proud of as Zimbabweans, we love learning. And we love getting the latest technologies. Um, and most of us, um, before the latest iPhone comes, you know, uh, some have even ordered it. And what we are very consumeristic, which is a plus and a negative, obviously. 
because I might prioritize the latest uh, iPhone over other maybe um, important uh, things. But uh, I would say that from a technology absorption point of view, as Zimbabweans, we are extremely fast and we are very good at, at, uh, at getting the latest technologies. Because we are highly mobile um, and we are highly connected. I mean, I don't have to get the latest phone here because we all know what percentage of our country is, is residing in the diaspora. It's, it's, it's a really impressive percentage. So it means we are very well networked. Mm. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to open up the floor to any questions. Uh, if you could please have a microphone passed to the next table. Thank you. While our mic makes its way to you, um, I love what you mentioned about the broad networks that we have as Zimbabweans. Broad networks opens us up to larger markets and it also opens us up to be able to collaborate with different people um, in different spaces. And I think the media plays such an important role um, to be a catalyst in telling and shaping the ways in which we do business, shaping the ways in which we tell stories about who we are as, um, as Zimbabweans. So my question to you is, do you have a favorite app? Out of the plethora of apps that are out there, do you have a favorite or top three apps that you use day to day? Besides WhatsApp. <laughs> yes, besides WhatsApp. <laughs> well, I, I, I think, uh, for, like most Zimbabweans, uh, WhatsApp is the app to have. I, I doubt there's anyone who doesn't have uh, WhatsApp. Uh, so that, uh, by default, um, ends up being one of my, my favorite apps. Um, yeah, um, I, also, I also like the, the platforms where I, I link up with, um, let me say, change makers. Uh, I've seen that for me, uh, when I go online, the first place I'll go to is LinkedIn because I tend to look for speakers in the work that I do. Uh, I'm also always scouting for speakers of certain experts in certain areas, uh, because when you are looking at the capacity building side and when media organizations are saying, oh, we are looking for a speaker on, uh, would like you to support us on data visualization. So I tend to go to that, uh, that space because I know that it, you know, it works for me. So, yeah, I would say for me, that would be my, my most favorite platform. Thank you so much. We're going to ask, um, I, would, I would like you to please introduce yourself, your name, your organization, and then your question. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Amanda Fazarim Konoshiro. I am a final year audiology student enrolled in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at the University of Zimbabwe. I am a public health advocate as well as a peer educator, and I'm here with Say What. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to ask my question. So my question pertains to the capacity building aspect. Um, as a public health advocate, I am really invested in the capacity building um, issue. And considering how, um, Mrs. McCurry, you mentioned how that is also a key area of focus for you, and considering how capacity building has three facets, individual, institutional, and systemic, you know, considering how, the, uh, how technology has availed us with the plethora of resources to capacity to capacitate ourselves as women and looking at the demographic statistics that you mentioned with regards to of the over 8 billion percentage of 8 billion population of individuals, how 57 are in urban areas, right? Now looking at our women in marginalized, marginalized regions, Right. Um, you mentioned how you know technology can also enable us to gain new qualifications as well as harness, hone in, sharpen our key competencies and skill sets as women. Now, looking at individuals, um, contrary to me, for example, who are not aware or have undertaken at fellowship programs as well has access to LinkedIn or also know courses, um, websites such as edX, which offer accredited courses and so forth. How can we capacitate those women? Great question. Thank you, Amanda. Yes. 
Yeah, very, very important question. And um, unfortunately, we are not doing too well uh, in terms of uh, capacitating them. Uh, one thing that, um, though that has changed quite a bit over the past, I would say, po possibly five years, um, and um, that has been even pushed by the COVID pandemic, is how we are now very much aware that in our rural communities, there's so much that is happening. You've got uh, even people that have set up canning uh, factories in rural areas. In those communities that are making, they, they are beneficiating, I didn't want to use that word, but, but it's, it applies here. They are beneficiating what they produce, the tomatoes, um, the fruits where they can make gems and so on. And some are even doing that uh, uh, for export. So I think the, the challenge then is not that the stories are not there. The stories are there. They are uh, amazing stories that we need to give more focus on. And when we do that, it also ignites other communities to make use of what is existing in their communities and harness whatever they have. Others have uh, potatoes, others have um, um, tomatoes or mangoes. So what is it that others have bananas? What is it that you have that you can harness? I think when you look at the SME sector, which um, again, when you look at the statistics, there are more women who are in the SME sector than men. So we need to do more, even from a media point of view, we need to do more to put focus on those projects that are taking place there. There's a lot that is happening. And like we, 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 we have seen, uh, I think Potras shares uh, uh, data on uh, where people have connectivity and who has phones where for Zimbabwe. You actually see there are a lot of people who have uh, phones in rural areas. We are one of the most connected countries in Africa. Yes, uh, yes, we can talk about our, our networks. The network is something else. How we struggle with networks because we struggle with power. Not that there are no base stations, but we do struggle with the power element of it. So that, those, I think, are the areas where we need to you know, uh, pull each other up, support each other, do more coverage as, as women. Here we are talking as women, mentor and support. But it is really a fact that there is a lot that is happening outside of the 57% 50, uh, of the urban population. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we can't take any more questions, but ladies, another round of applause for Susan. Thank you, Susan.